Yo, 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 what's going on, gamers? Your boy Maverick here back with that daily dose. The show where I do my best to answer your guys' questions. You guys get to know me a little bit better. I get to know y'all a little bit better. Reach imav at gmail.com if you want to send me an email. Just be specific with your uh with your with your subject. And then um also be patient, man. I'm sitting on over 900. Let me actually get y'all the exact. It might be like 904 now. Or it was 904, I believe. Um, a lot of unread, that's unread, not total, that's unread emails. Uh, after every episode, I get a, a buttload. Yeah, 911 unread emails. So let me, I mean, y'all be like, man, you just be lying, bruh. Or 900, and, oh, wow. What did I just tell y'all? 917? And look, watch me scroll. Y'all see that? I see that. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling through these emails. I'm scrolling through. I'm scrolling through them. There's so many, and we ain't even got to the unread yet. All right, there we go. Or the the red yet where we left off. Shout out to Larray in the building. You got a pack opening dropping later today. Yeah. <laughs> Turn up. Uh, I did a pack opening with her yesterday. Yeah. Um. Nice. Uh, so we're knocking this video out early in the morning for y'all. So this is uh, it's gonna be somewhat on time if, as long as I get to it. Um, it might be a little bit late though because I've been having issues with me having to edit these. Like my uh, my lips and my mouth is all out of sync, so I gotta edit them. I usually haven't had to edit them, so just a heads up with that. Um, alrighty, 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 y'all ready? Where are we at? Um, TQ, I started that. I read your email, TQ. I appreciate that, man. Alright. Oh, I don't have my stopwatch up. Uh-huh. Alright, y'all go play in the background. Y'all go. Uh, wifey's, like I told you, she's out doing the, um... No. Oh, that's yours. Okay, you're good. Go ahead, put them on. Swag queen. Um, she's out at a rehearsal. They're uh, getting ready for this Christmas play. All right. James. I believe is where we left off. I'd like to say thank you for your dedication to YouTube and your devotion to viewer satisfaction. Every day when I get back from school in England, uh, we put my phone on and watch the new content on your channel, which is always, which, which there always is. Congratulations with your children. I love the updates. Oh, this is just a testimonial. James. From England, I appreciate you. Shout out to them English folk. No, y'all don't play with that. Y'all don't play with that. They're over there playing with this chair, which is shouldn't be a big deal, right? But they stay falling off of it and getting hurt. We'll leave them in the background. Uh, ben said, "Do you have any points to motivate yourself doing anything?" Uh, again, this email is old. We're talking November 11th still, so um, if you've been watching all the videos, man, I, I think I've said a few things that kind of speak motivation and what I do as far as what I do and stuff. Um, oh, quick. Well, I'll, I'll talk to that. I'll talk about that later. Um, so, yeah, man, how, how I stay motivated is these kiddos you see. Um, uh, just because right now they got a few, they got a, some luxuries that I never had growing up and uh, they don't have a lot of the stress and I pray that they don't have a lot of the stresses I had growing up with stuff so motivate that's my motivation you guys are my motivations I just got a big reason why that, that, that pushes me behind pushes everything that I do some of you guys will be like yeah I just want to be successful in life and when I ask you guys like your biggest dream and stuff like that some people were like to be successful for those of you guys that said that you need to go back in the lab and get more specific with that um, you need to get as specific as you can. You you don't even just I want to make the NBA. You need to be more specific than that. You need to be like, yeah, I want to be uh, an NBA All Star by the time I'm 28, an NBA All Star my second year. Uh, like you need to get so specific, and you need to think about it often and, and meditate on it, and get it just programmed into your subconscious mind. Uh, so just get get real specific with it, right? Um. I think one of my issues now with YouTube is I need to get I, I know who I want to reach 
and I, and I have that, but I need to get a little bit more specific with my goals as far as how many people I want to reach. Because I showed you guys the old list, right? Uh, that was specific, and we crushed through that. So now uh, I need to get back in the lab. Uh, and that, that's the thing, too. You constantly need to be setting new marks, right? So I got a lot of marks in life, uh, but with YouTube, I think I need to get another another one, like another goal, and just be specific with it. But, um... But yeah, just that strong reason why that's going to keep you motivated. All right, next one. Oh, so one thing I want to talk about. I, someone hit me up on Twitter. I forget my man's name. But he asked, uh, what kind of haircut do you get to get waves? And um, I thought it was a good question because he was a youngster. Um, a lot of people might not know that. And then white friends, right? White subs. You can go go back to your other white friends. They'd be like, bruh, I learned something else new. I learned the do-rag. And now I know how black people get waves. But, um... It's not a haircut that you get, man. It, it comes really... No, put that back. Put that back. Big girl. No, put it back where you got it. See, she's defiant like me. See, she... Put it back where you got it. Thank you. So she picked up that little that little rod, right? And was bringing it to me. And I was like, no, nah, put it back where you got it. And she put it down, like, kind of by it, but right next... Not right to it. Like, one of them... She just don't like being told what to do. Yeah, okay. Go play a sister. Go hit her. Um, and so, like me, I was that kid. I'd be about to touch something, and my mom would be like, don't touch that. I'd be like, okay. And then i just float my hand over it. I'm not touching it, though. I'm not touching it, though. I'm not touching it, though. Like, I just because I hate being punked, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, and I'm still working on it. I got it a lot better. But anyway, uh, it's not as important. Uh, the haircut isn't as important as it is just making sure you get a good wave grease. I mean, there's a lot of things that I do into it. That's for another video to get into, like, all the specifics. I could show you guys um, once I get it fully popping and everything. But I use a lot of stuff. I use, um, I got, like, a little wave lotion. I, when I'm first starting out, I get the beeswax. I got carrot cream. Uh, sometimes I mess with carrot oil. Get a right, get a good uh, shampoo and conditioner, but then you, then you get the wave gel, and then it's just about brushing. You gotta brush a lot, brush your hair a lot, and then make sure you're constantly wearing your do rag, and that'll train your hair. It'll lay it down, and then the natural it naturally curls back up, right? So that the curl versus the you training it to lay down will create the wave effect, and yeah, that's how you get waves. All right, that was a, a, a side note that was kind of sent on Twitter, but. Ooh, where are we at? What is this one? Why do I have this one starred? Uh, I did that on accident. Okay. Ben. Oh, we just answered yours. How do you stay motivated? Aaron. Hey, Mav. Hope you're having a good day. I just wanted to ask a question. If your channel's not ba if your channel was not based on Madden, what game would you choose to base it off? Oh, great question. Great question. Um. And I'll tell y'all this, man. This is a big goal of mine. So, for example, um, if you watch like a lot of my Madden videos, which I'm sure most people here watch my Madden videos, you'll notice that I've been uh, doing like little commercials um, to try and get my Let's Play channel popping. First, let me address that. Well, let me not rant because this is a big ranting topic. But um, I appreciate everyone that's supporting those, whether you've checked out the other channel or not. Um... But for the people that hate it and can't stand it, I'm not going to lie, it bothers me in my soul when I see that. And I try to take note of everyone I see complaining. Um, not saying that you don't have the right to complain. You can always complain. But then on the flip side, I have the right to take mental notes and be like, ooh, if I ever do a giveaway, I'll just make sure that person don't win. Um, because it, and it bothers me because it comes off as a little bit ungrateful. Uh, especially with the YouTube videos, you guys get that at a 100% free um, you guys get those videos 100% free of charge. Most of you guys are already rocking ad block, so you know that takes away the ads off my videos. So I don't even get paid off your views, and then so that's why they're really pissed off because they're like, "Oh, I got this ad block, so I don't even worry about ads." So you're not even supporting me when you watch, and you get it for free. And then I put in like a little minute to 30 second, some are shorter than that ad, and you get pissed off. Ooh, ooh, that grinds my gears, and I just be wanting to go banned and. But it sucks when you ban people. They can still watch your videos. And what's crazy, it'll, it'll be people that don't even comment on my videos normally. And then they'll comment it by, oh, I hate these ads. And I'm like, I hate you and your mama. 
<laughs> Y'all know how I be. Those are the ones that I'm like mentally cursing out in my head, and then I'm like, oh, God bless your soul, child. I'm sorry you feel that way, but ooh. But anyway, uh, that's actually a good question because there's a lot of games I want to get into besides Madden. I don't know if I ever want to be known for just one game um, because I, I see how it makes me feel with Madden. I almost feel like the 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 entrepreneur hate having a boss in me, hates feeling stuck to one thing. And then as you try to do other things, people are like, oh, I stick to Madden. Oh, you're a Madden guy. Uh, when I'm not, I think a lot of my other videos – um, are better than my Madden videos. So if I could, if I had it my way, I would get my my Let's Play channel to blow up because it's a lot more refreshing over there. There's new games all the time. Uh, but being a Let's Play commentator and blowing up with that is pretty hard uh, because you really got to get people to fall in love with you and watch no matter what game you play. So it's kind of hard. Uh, there's not too many out there, but they are out there. Um, but if I had to pick like one game. That I wouldn't mind blowing up off of. I think GTA would be one of them. Uh, because I love those streams when I do them. There's a lot of variety that can go on with it. Um, but in, if I had it my way, my Let's Play channel would be bigger than my Madden channel. I don't know that I would ever stop playing Madden. Even if I blew up to like PewDiePie style on my on my Let's Play channel. Because I do love Madden. And it, I don't know any game as of now that gives me that same competitive fix that Madden does. Uh, but I would definitely love for my Let's Play channel to blow up. Blow up. So that's why I'm promoting it hard. That's why I'm going to be grinding over there. Uh, and yeah, if you are a viewer over there, I appreciate everyone that just takes the time to like, favorite, share videos. Because that's I'm trying to blow up that boy. Um, and it also lets me to uh, allows me to reach more people too, because I can get a lot, a lot, uh, real international, and just different types of people. Because it's a bigger market than just Madden. So uh, I'll reach a lot more people there. So good question. Aaron. You're cute, Larray. Did 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 I can say your name, Dylan. Hey, Mav. I know you're a really loyal Christian, so I was just wondering, what are some of your morals that you will always stand by, or something that you apply to your life every day? I know all glory to God is one. But what are any others? Uh, I love your videos, so keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I love the new series I did. Thanks for actually caring about your subs, Dylan. Thank you, man. Um, well, yeah, you know, anything that the Bible is preaching, you know what I mean, is what I'm about. But one thing specifically that I'm really trying to work on and I feel God's trying to work on in my life is just walking in love. Um, and it's really easy to love my kids, love my wife, love my friends, right? But just... Uh, love the people that it's hard to love. Love the people that are mean to me and rude to me. Uh, love the the cashier where I'm checking out and they're being impatient and talking to me crazy. Um, you know what I mean? Just it, walking in love. Um, put that back, Larry. You just wanted to get my attention so you could pick your nose? Go hit Larry. Go hit Larry. Go get her. Don't run, Larray. Judo grip. Don't run, Larray. See, look at you. Look at you. Y'all go over there. Here, y'all go over here. Put that back. Lavelle, go over here. Go over there with Larray. Um. All right, Larray, put that back. Just set it. Set it down. All right. Go to your room. Big girl. You too, Lavelle. Go to your room. Yep, y'all go play. Love y'all. Um, yeah, just walking in love, cause that's something that's not doesn't doesn't come natural for me. Um, but I've come a long way. I'm talking like, and this is like a good question for wifey. One of my most embarrassing moments is wifey was out here when she first moved out here. She was we were in the mall trying to get her a job, and she got an application at one of these like retail spots. And we went to the food court. We're about to fill it out. And then we realized, oh, crap, we forgot to get a pen. So there was this hat store right next to the pen. Or a hat store right next to the food court. And I went, went over there real quick. There was like a little Arab dude working over there. And I was like, hey, man, uh, real quick, my wife, uh, uh, she, she's got an application over here. We just um, 
you know, we forgot to get a pen. Can I, can I get a pen really quick uh, for my wife? Or no, my, it was my girlfriend at the time. A uh, pen for my girlfriend. And he was like, no. I'm not going to give you no pen to fill out an application for some store that ain't even mine. I was like, bruh, but, I mean, she's a female. She's, it's like a, it was like a little 797. I forget which one, but it was like a little girl female store. I was like, bruh, it's a little female shop. Like, come on, stop playing. Let me get a pen. He was like, nah, I ain't doing that. And I, I lost it. Wifey had to end up running over there. I was about to fight the dude. Um, I'm yelling at him, and then she drags me out the store, and I'm pissed off. I'm outside the store. Um, of course, I'm cursing back then. I'm talking mad crap to him. Um, and uh, I was just outside his out his shop, just mugging him, just waiting for him to come out. I was going, I was just, I was ready to fight the dude over not letting me use a pen. And um, yeah, and that's mad embarrassing, right? It's it's that's so petty. But I was turned up. And I mean, and this is like, he was like a small Arab dude. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know what I thought I was proving there. Um, you know what I mean? It's not like wifey was right there too when I was trying to show off for her. Or she was girlfriend back then. But that's just how I was like, the fact that I wanted some and he said no, but he didn't really, he didn't say it as nice as I felt he should have. Like I felt punk. So I was ready to turn up. And then so I've always been like very confrontational again. Of course, the internet stuff's never been that bad because it's internet stuff. But still, like I'd argue with people on the internet. Like I, I didn't know how to let stuff go. <coughs> I never let stuff go. I would hold grudges. I held grudges against my with my dad. So much resentment. Um, someone pissed me off. I would just. It was nothing for me to drop them and hate them forever. Um, Thank God back then growing up I never lost any fights because if I did I would probably end up killing the other person God knew like I just wouldn't drop it I would not drop it like if someone were to knock me out like as soon as I came to I would find that person <laughs> like I'd be up all night drinking Red Bulls till I find them I'd be back at school the next day with a bat like I just didn't it was bad it was bad um, but that's just the environment I grew up in that's my brothers like that uh, he's calmed down. My older brother that you guys have seen. My mom is like that. She's so bad. My little brother and my dad are the only ones that are kind of chill. Uh, my dad's obviously passed away. If you've been following my channel, but my little brother's chill. He's he's not like that, which is good, which is really good. So that's my biggest thing: walking in love. Trust me. Um, I'd be very ashamed for you guys to know. And I'm not. And I. What was crazy is I'm not. I walked around fighting a lot of people. Um, Cause honestly, not a lot of people would would butt heads with me, um, and I wouldn't, and I wasn't no one that ever started nothing either. I wasn't someone that just um, like went around bullying people or anything like that. It was just um, if you did something, I felt disrespected or I felt punked. I wouldn't drop it, never. I wouldn't drop it um, until within like the last year, year and a half, as I've been walking in love. Like not no one from school. To me walking in a gas station and them being a clerk or whatever can say that they punked me. And and of course that was something I always carried as like a badge of honor. Like, yeah, you ain't punking me. Um, I don't care how big you were. What's wrong? Yo, it'd be so frustrating dealing with her because she don't understand English. Or she understands, but she can't speak good English. So she'd be like, uh, oh, but that I'm the aunt and I'm like, I don't know, Laville go show me but um so yeah so that but as i've grown up and this, this is a good message to some of you youngsters man that stuff's so petty that's so petty and i'm i thank god because i didn't i didn't talk crap to some really big dudes like <laughs> stuff that didn't turn into fights where i'm not gonna lie i was like woo! thank god this didn't escalate because i wasn't gonna get punked i don't care how big you are i don't care if you a shack if you a shack and you scuffed the side of my shoes and you didn't apologize I was turning up, and then Shaq would murder me, right? But I was just so blinded by it. It was pride. That's really what it is. It's a lot of pride, um, and you know, a decent amount of pride can be a good thing, but it can in, in excess. Uh, the Bible said like pride comes before the fall. So too much pride is a very, very bad thing. And so that's my biggest thing: love. Um, and now I get punked all the time, man. I'll be in the store, people so rude to me sometimes, and I'm like. Alright man, God bless. And I keep it moving. So uh 
but but that's not a when you when you realize it that's that's really what it's about man walking in love uh people with that pride i've had my, i've gotten myself into so many dumb situations where i wake up feeling stupid um like i ain't have to flip out on that person flipping out on that dude over a pen over a pen i had nothing going on in my life that was more important for me to not get upset over a guy not letting me use a pen that's so immature, that's so silly, that's so stupid. Um, you know what I mean? In high school, what are most of the fights about? Oh, I heard you was talking ish. That's so insignificant, man. Um, so you get in a fight over you get in a fight with that dude, even a month later, that fight means nothing, right? Uh, those words don't mean nothing. Um one thing I'll still stand by though, as long um I'm not at the point, and I don't know if I'll ever get to this point. I don't think I ever need to get to this point. I'm still a protector, though, for my family. Uh, as a man, that's my job. So I ain't going to get to the point where someone's messing with my family, and I'm just like, oh, I love you. Now you're getting shot and or stabbed. Um, you know, ain't no one's going to break in my house. And I'm like, oh, I love you. Stop it. No. Give me a hug. No. Um, you're getting sliced. Uh and I don't know if I'm at that point to if someone were to hurt like my daughters, I'd be able to just be chilling, loving. I was actually talking with that with some older dudes at one of my Bible study. And I was like, okay, because he's real meek. He's real chill. And I, I want that meekness. And he'd be like, like, I was like, yo, so what if someone punched your daughter in the face, right? A grown man. She comes to you bleeding, busted nose, black eye. Like, what do you do? He was like, I'd call the cops. And I was like, okay, step one. I was like, what next? And he's like, that's it. I'm like, bruh. What if he's like right there to like, you know, he's right there. He's like, yeah, I called the cops, man. Have them deal with it. Uh, he's like, yeah, I could, you know, beat the heck out of that man. Uh, but I don't want to get locked up and spend time away from my kids either. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I'd probably be going to prison, though. I, I'm not, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you, what would you do? Like, Lorraine Lavelle, come here. Or my wife, you know what I mean? Like, I just love them so much. So to see them be hurt, uh, I don't know that I could just chill out. Lorraine, come here. Lavelle. But, um, like, as far as someone talking about them, though, I've got good practice with that on the internet, though. Uh, people stay talking about me, my wife calling me bad parents everything like i'm used to that so I, i've actually grown in areas with that so words don't hurt me no more words i'm very good with that so i'm growing so that's my it's been a big rant but i hope i got a point across to some of you too especially you youngsters um i'm just realizing the 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 power of love man uh, because as i've been going through it too I've, I've found myself in a lot of similar situations from when i was younger and love diffuses a lot a lot of stuff man you know what i mean um you know what I mean? Someone's talking about you in, at school. They're talking-ish, right? Instead of rolling up. Luray. Luray. Oh, they turning up. They playing. Never mind. I probably shouldn't call them back. We already, we already moved on past that point. But, um, you know what I mean? Instead of rolling up on them, be like, what? What's up? You talking? What you talking about? Just be like, hey, man. Roll, roll up on them for sure. Be like, hey, man. Uh, this is what I heard. You know what I mean? Are you... You really feel this way about me? Yeah, I do. I feel you a little boop, boop, boop. Well, dang, man. Why you got to feel that way? Like, I, I ain't got no problems with you. That's really unfortunate. Oh, well, I couldn't let no one hurt you. No one did. I'd have to judo grip them, huh? Judo grip. Judo grip anyone that tries to judo grip you. I don't play that. Yeah, say pops don't play that. Don't play that. Yeah, or oh, or Lavelle, my little swag queen. I'm swag My little queen. emotional swag queen. I'm swag queen too. Um, but uh, yeah, man, like, like of course, like someone is talking crap about you, you you approach them with hostility. All right, go get Lorraine. Uh, you know what I mean? They go, they they ready for that. But when you come to them with the love, be like, well, dude, I'm sorry. I don't, you feel this way about me, it might be a misunderstanding. I don't feel that way about you. I mean, if you were talking crap about them, too, not much you could do there. Walking in love starts with not talking crap about them, but 
You know what I mean? Then it's like, you know what? I did say that. I'm sorry. Um, I really don't want no problems. Um, and you move on from there. But see, look, I'm going to tell you, old man, if I saw that situation, I'd be like, dang, you just got punked. They just rolled up to fight you and you ain't even fight them. You got scared. Like, that was me. Like, that's, I would have thought that was um, the person getting punked. But as I've grown and, and, and I see situations like that now, and as I was, and I'm still growing in love, like, I envy that so much. I'm just like, oh, man, how are you able to do that? That's so dope that you were able to just diffuse that, not even mirror their negativity and just move on. Like, that's where it's really at, y'all. That's going to keep you drama-free. Um, you know, just walking in love with everybody. Um, you're going you're gonna to see minimal amounts of drama. And then when you do see it, even handling that, because some stuff's unavoidable, you handle that situation with love, you're going to be good, man. You gonna be good. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh wow, too. I'm thinking of a, a proverb. I don't even wanna wanna um, wanna uh, butcher it. But base, I'm not gonna quote it. But basically, in proverbs, um, it talks about how uh, you know, like the hostile words and negativity and talking crap just fuels a fire. Um, but but with your kind words, that just kills it. it just kills it. So that that's something I would like to stress to you youngster because I know there's some hotheads watching my videos that were just like me and it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So I'm always trying to love those around me, even the people that off the top I don't feel like deserve it. You know what I mean? So that's my biggest thing. That was a really long rant, but I hope anyone, if you got any takeaway from that or you can relate in any way, let me know in the comment section because I think I was a pretty... Um, like I was always a cool, chill, nice dude on the outside, but I would, I would, I would harbor resent, unforgiveness for people, um, and I think forgiveness is actually an area where I, I'm, it's, it's a strength of mine being able to forgive people now, which used to be a weakness. You did me wrong, I never forgot, um, I never forgave. Um, but one thing people need to realize too, forgiveness always doesn't mean restoration. So, so there's a lot of people that you know will do me wrong. And I, I always, I forgive everybody. The hardest thing I ever had to do is forgive my dad for my childhood. So after I forgave him, moving on and forgiving anyone else has been easy. But you got to realize, too, forgiveness is more for yourself than it is the other person. But you know what forgiveness is? Oh, there's a really good quote that's coming to mind. And I'm, and I'm probably going to butcher it. But uh, forgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Because it's like you hold all this stuff inside. It's like, ooh, I hate them. And it bothers you, that unforgiveness. But you like want it to affect them. And they might be going on with their life happy. So you got to unforgive them first for yourself. You know what I mean? And then for them. So, but yeah, it, there's I don't hold anything against no one. And, uh... And then so yeah, but, but yeah, there's a lot of people that do me wrong, right? And I'll forgive them. Like people that I see on the regular, I forgive them, but that don't mean I necessarily bring them back into my life and we'll be we'll be cool like we were, right? So we could be best friends, and you do some that causes me to lose your trust. Uh, you do me dirty. I'm gonna forgive you for that, but that doesn't mean all right, we're best friends again. And then some people try to use that on Christians, like, oh, I thought you forgave me. Yeah, I do. I just ain't messing with you no more. You know what I mean? You forgiving. Go on. But I'm not going to restore you back to that spot that you were, you know, if you don't deserve it. So, um, that's that. Uh, so, yeah. Let's end this episode here. I kind of did a lot of rambling on love, but, you know, hope it helps someone out there. So, let, let's, let's think of a question along those lines. Um, dang it. I can think of a question. I just don't know how to word it. Mm. Okay. Something along the lines of love, right? Uh. Okay, this will be a two-part question. Two-part question. 
I think we've all been hurt by someone in some some area. So this could get deep for some people. Could get emotional for some people. Hey, let it fly. All right, so this, I'm going to ask two different questions, but it should fit everybody. Question of the day. Who was the hardest person? What, what, how do I word this question? My grammar is so bad. Um, like, man, if you read all them books and your grammar sucks. I know, right? Who is... What was who was the hardest person to forgive in your life? So two parts. That doesn't. If you haven't forgave no one, I got a second part. Who was who was the hardest person for you to forgive in your life? Okay. Part one. Part two. Who's the one person that you need to forgive in your life? And then as you, if, if that second question question hits you like, oh, I pray, I'm going to pray for you. And I pray that you work on it. If you need prayer and help forgiving someone, uh, leave that in the comment section. I'll go through and I'll pray for you. I'm sure others will go and pray for you because that's huge, man. That's huge. So if I answer the question, it was my dad um, who's passed away now. There was, uh, all right, so my pops, like I said, in and out. You know, my, my, my parents got divorced two different times, or was it three different times? I don't know. And so, you know, it would go from me living with my mom to us living back with my pops, living with my mom. And during that time, he was a very horrible husband before, you know, my me and my brother got old enough to be able to fight for my mom. He used to beat my mom. You know, he's kicked her out in the cold before, made her walk home in the snow. He's done a lot of really, he, a lot of infidelity. He cheated on my mom multiple times. Um... I mean, there's stories as far as, like, him watching my brother, my little brother, when he was a ba a youngster, taking my, while my mom's out, he would take my brother to another woman's house, give him a cookie to shut up, and then sleep with that woman, right? And then they'd go back and uh, wait for my mom to get done at work or something. Like, he was a really bad husband. Um, as far as a father, I think he was a really bad, he was a, he was a, a bad husband. I would say he was a pretty bad father as well, um, but he didn't know. He didn't have an example. And I think that's usually what happens in someone's life. If you don't have a good example, you either follow that or you just be the complete opposite. And thank God for my older brother. He was like the first one to kind of break that chain, break a lot of the chains that we've had. Um, a lot of generational curses we've had in our family as far as um, bad, bad alcoholics. That's part of what, what killed my, my pops. He had liver cancer. Bad alcoholics, um, womanizers, just horrible husbands, just really it, just being real. And it sucks to just, I'm not trying to disrespect the, the generations above me, but that's what it is. It's really weak men. And of course, in society, some might consider it strong, like, yeah, you're somewhat tough, beating all women. and But that's weak. That's so weak. Um, getting a bunch of girls, that's insecurity. Like, you can't be faithful to women, that's insecurity. Like, that's weak. And so we had a lot of those generational curses. My brother started to break some. And I feel like the few he um, might have left, I'm breaking them. And then my little brother going to clean up even more. So we're flipping the script. But, yeah, so um, Pops was there, taught me a few good things as far as not being weak. Um, I can think of a time where I'll share, this, I'll, share, I'll share this on another story. One of my earlier fights in life was someone tried to punk me for my water gun. I came in the house crying. He was like, go back out. Get your water gun. You know, you better fight. Or was that my mom? Or was it both of them? I don't remember. I remember they were like, yo, you better come back with your water gun. And if you come back crying because you lost the fight, I'm going to spank you again. <laughs> and it was one of them dope water guns with the backpack on it. I had just got it. You know what I mean? It was, um... Like it had the backpack and it and the backpack was full of water and the nozzle came down and hooked so you would be spraying like unlimited and the dude the, the, it was two dudes that took it they were like my friends but they were older I think I was in elementary school when we we're living at that house I had to have been in fourth grade yeah fourth grade or fourth or fifth so I'm pretty sure this happened in fourth and they were already in middle school and uh, what were their names? But they were like skateboard kids. They were cool, but they, they were, we were doing water gun fights, and they had took mine and were using it, and I wanted it back. And they were like, okay, I'll give it to you. Hold on, wait. I'll give it to you. And they wouldn't give it to me. 
and then I went inside crying. I came back out, and let's just say I came back with my water gun. I came back with my water gun. Uh, that was such. I'm so. I'm ranting so bad in this episode. But anyway, um, that was. You know, he. he I'm trying to think, is that my mom, though? Because my mom's the same way. I don't know, but he did teach me some things as far as, like, not being soft. Um, he was involved decently in my sports stuff. He really was. But it's just as far as showing love, being there, loving my mom, which is one of the biggest things you can do for a kid. Um, and then just really caring when you needed to. Like, he just knew sports and... Making sure I wasn't soft, which I think are really good things to teach in a kid. But almost everything else, he, he, I don't think he knew how. And as I, I used to hate him growing up, there's plenty of times I said, I hope you die. There was times him and my mom would get in arguments. And I, I remember uh, specifically a time I had a golf club, one of his little putters. I was swinging it at his head trying to kill him. Because uh, he, he didn't even say nothing. He didn't even hit my mom. My mom was wild, so I think my mom hit him. And he was just trying to get away and, like, you know, pushed her off. And he was going to the other room. And I lost it. And I was trying to go bury Bonds. And my mom ended up stopping me. I was, like, seven. Uh, but I just had no, leave the door open, Lavelle. I had this resentment. Been like, man, you weren't there when I needed you for this. You didn't care about this. Like, I told you the time where, you know, I thought I was going to die of my panic attack. He refused to take me. Um... So there's a lot of things that I just hated him for Mainly just stuff he did to my mom And I can see even to this day how scarred and bruised my mom is And just so many insecurities and deep wounds that he's put in her life That she, I hope, but she, she may never struggle, shake off, right? So um, it was really hard to forgive him for stuff, for all that But since I've been an adult, so since I've been on my own So in the last five years um, maybe six, like college, I had to let that go, um, and really just start to rebuild our relationship, and it got to the point where when he, like, there was a time if he would have died, and he died a really bad death, I wouldn't have cared, I wouldn't have been at the hospital, but oh, for any of you guys that followed me, like, that hurt me, like, we had got to a point where his death hurt, um, I was at the hospital anytime I could be up there, I was the one taking him to a lot of his, um, chemo appointments and he would have those uh he didn't even start chemo till he was um dying but he had a lot of the the oncology right that's what it's called on oncology oncology the cancer stuff he would have a lot of those appointments what else did he have um he would just have a lot of tests and then sometimes he'd have two appointments in a day uh he'd have one at like 11 and then one later at like two or three and then so that would really mess up my work schedule like i was there for him we it took a lot of work um and most of the work had to be on my part because he's an older, stuck in his ways, but I just learned to forgive, and I was wa working on walking in love, and, um, but I really think that blessed him, too, because for our, I could always tell he wanted to show love, and as, this stuff I realized as I grew, and he wanted to have a relationship that was deeper with me and stuff, he just didn't know how to go about it, he's just so, because he had never had sh no one show it to him, so for me reaching out, and us getting to hang out, and just getting closer, um, I could tell, that was something he really enjoyed and then me just being with him through his uh, my older brother was there a lot too um just me being there for him through his last days i could tell it meant a lot to him and so so that's awesome that was really awesome but uh that's it y'all i rambled this is a one of my worst rambling episodes but i hope it was a good one hope you guys enjoyed that what's up show them your dance we don't got time for dance we'll show them the dance next episode okay Okay, you practice, so next time you'll show them the dance, all right? Okay. Um, all right, y'all. Appreciate y'all rocking with your boy. Y'all be easy. Till next time, God first. God bless.